Yo, what is up, guys? My name is Nicholas Earl, and welcome back to another episode of Earl Sports Bets. And today we've got another MLB slate. We're going to be going over. It's 15 games, so we're not going to waste any time here. You guys know what to do: give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on those post notifications so you guys are notified each and every time we come out of the video here at Earl Sports Bets. You can also follow us on our social medias at bets earl on twitter at earl sports bets on instagram you can also join our discord chat if you want to join that the link to that is in the description of the video down below as well as our merch is down there as well if you guys want to check out earl sports bets merch and help support the channel that way you can do it uh you can uh, click the link to that in the description of the video below but uh also we have our contest all right, let's go quick review over our contest. Not that. A quick review over our contest for today. Uh, you, all you guys got to do is give your best bets out for every single video we do. Or you can do one pick per video per day. Uh, one for this baseball video. One for Tim's NBA ba video later in the day. And one for my one of my uh, for my NHL video later into the day as well first place right now is andreas Monty with a nine and three record up seven and a half units second place is katie fisher 10 and 9 with a 4.04 units gain and wheezy's in third 2.7 units followed closely by raymond mason at 2.52 so you guys there's still seven days to join this i feel like there's still enough time to catch back up if you guys want to hop on into this contest already right. plus it's free all you guys gotta do is leave a comment in the comment section below. Yeah, not not to mention that there's seven days left. You could do 21 picks a, uh, in that time span, and if you hit 10 out of, if you hit like 14, 15 out of 21, you, you can get right back into it. All right. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the recap of what happened yesterday. Uh, we'll start with you, Tim. Uh, I decided to take a bunch of dogs and run lines and stuff like that. Try to make some money. It didn't really work out. Cleveland loss, uh, LA loss, Miami. Um, unfortunately, they lost, but I had the under in that one, so I, got, I profited on that game either way. And I got that nice plus 150 tag from the Seattle Mariners. Oh, another good game there. Yeah, and uh, I had a really nice day yesterday, 4-0 uh, on the diamond. Uh, Seattle getting me the win, getting the under to hit between the Dodgers and the Padres. Uh, then we had the Diamondbacks once again. Follow, I'm, I'm riding them until that streak dies. They win 14-11 versus Cincinnati. And then we're going with the Houston Astros here. First five minus a half. That one cashed as they're up 8 nothing at the end of the fifth inning. Uh, we, I went 4-0 yesterday. I'm 53-46 now up 53.5%. Up 15.8 units. So we making some money. This MLB season. So uh, let's get right into today's uh, card and see if we can increase that number even more. We're starting it off here with the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs. We're getting Kyle Hendricks taking on Brett Anderson. And we'll start with Tim for this matchup. Uh, for this one, uh, I'm, I'm grabbing Milwaukee. Uh, even though Chicago is kind of hot right now, so is Milwaukee. Both of them have won their last three games. Uh, Brett Anderson. It's a solid pitcher, 2-1 with a 2.65 ERA. He's been pitching pretty well this year. Uh, and then on the other side, you do got Kyle Hendricks. He um, he has not gotten a win this year so far, so uh, I don't think it's going to be today. I, uh, keep in mind, Chicago is coming off of a three-game sweep of the Mets, uh, where the Mets don't really have an offense right now because they don't know how to hit. Um, and Milwaukee does know how to hit, so they're going to be in, in for a little bit of rude awakening if they think they're going to come into. Uh, I come home for sh for a three game series against Milwaukee. Milwaukee will probably win the series if not sweep them. Uh, so I'm taking the Milwaukee Brewers. And yeah, you're giving me plus money to fade the Cubs. Sign me up. I'm taking that plus 125. Yeah, for me it's it's only a slight lean towards these Brewers here. Uh, I would probably look for them first five. Unfortunately, they they we don't have any first five odds for them on our book here. But I would probably look for them first five. That Cubs bullpen's actually looked pretty good this year. Ninth in the MLB. Uh, so a slight bullpen disadvantage for the Brewers. Uh, so that's why I would lean more towards the looking at the first five than the full game. But yeah, I, I like this Brewers team a lot. Brent Anderson looked decent. He went seven uh, shutout innings in his last appearance. He looks good. So uh, we're gonna I'm gonna go with a slight lean towards Milwaukee, 
but I'm not getting to the ticket. Oh, I'm not getting to the window for this game. But we're going to look at our next game here, which I will be getting to. We have the Oakland Athletics taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Minus 124 for the Athletics, plus 114 for the Orioles. Over under of nine runs for this game. Cole Irving versus Jorge Lopez. And plain and simple, this is a let's ride the streak till it dies play. I know I don't take many minus monies in this, uh, or many favorites in the MLB, but we're going with the Oakland Athletics here, minus 124. I bet it at minus 126 last night, and uh, this this Oakland uh, this Oakland team's won 10 straight games. I mean, plain and simple, this is a team that is on fire right now, 11, and I don't 11. 11 straight games. My bad. I have 10 and 0 in the last 10, um, but this is not a team I want to jump in front of. Plus. Jorge Lopez does not scare me. 8.56 ERA. He's 1-2 on the season with a 1.32 whip. Uh, he's given up 13 earned runs, 13 hits, and 13 and two-thirds innings. He's not looked good at all. So I like the Oakland Athletics in this matchup. Minus 124 versus the Baltimore Orioles. All right, it's, uh, it's not that I'm not betting Athletics when they're the hottest team in baseball right now. Um... I like to bet teams that have a little bit of streaks going, like three, four, or five games, somewhere in that nature, because those are manageable to keep going. Um, Oakland's on an 11. I, I don't feel like they're going to be able to go much longer on this long streak. Uh, I'm not taking the Baltimore Orioles by any stretch of the imagination, uh, especially considering that they're only a 1-4 team. If, they're like a minor, if, they're, if uh, Baltimore was like a plus 130, plus 140, I would have considered taking them and thinking that they're going to snap uh, Oakland's streak. But uh, at a plus 114, I'm not going to be interested in that. Hopefully more uh, Oakland money comes in. If I can get Baltimore at a plus 130, I'm going to be betting it. So, All right. Uh, our next game we're looking at here is the Washington Nationals taking on the New York Mets. Eric Fetty versus Jacob DeGoat. Minus 295 for the Mets, plus 262 for the Nationals. Over under seven runs for this game. Where are you looking at this one? Uh, under. Uh, sorry, um, fade, fading, but I do look at, towards the under in this one. Uh, is there, a, what's the first five number? Three and a half. Uh, I, think I'd, mm, I think I'd be interested in leaning that way. Um, I, I think I'm just going to totally lay off this game in general. Uh, if anything, yeah, that three and a half under is the most intriguing play from this game. Um, considering that Jacob DeGrom doesn't allow runs up and uh, Mets don't give run support. So maybe. But um, I'm not going to be too interested in going after this game. I think this one's just a full fade and because the Mets really love screwing over DeGrom and Washington Nationals sometimes have DeGrom's number. So I'm not going to be going after this one. I just don't want to. Yeah, and for me, this is a Nationals or pass spot. Uh, there's no way I'm laying minus 295 on a team that's lost their last three games. And minus 315 for the first five, that's insane. Uh, I, I just don't trust this Mets team like that to get the job done for me. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be passing on this game. Probably a lean towards the Nationals just because, I mean, they've won their last two games. They've looked okay. And you're getting plus 262 on them. But no action for me here between the New York Mets and the um, Washington Nationals. Our next game is the Seattle Mariners and the Boston Red Sox. Minus 130 for the Red Sox, plus 120 for the Mariners. You see, you say Kokuchi taking on Martin Perez uh, in this matchup. And for me, looking at this game, I'm just surprised how good this bullpen has been for Seattle. They're fourth in the MLB. The Seattle team is tied in first with the Oakland Athletics. They've looked good so far this year. If I would have to lean either way, it would be to the uh, would be to the Mariners. But it's a pass for me in this game. Uh, I just don't see any value on this line. It's definitely they've definitely adjusted the lines and made it less intriguing to bet the Mariners here. Uh, so it's a pass for me. Well, I, I agree. Um, I, I'm I I do like Seattle in this matchup. Uh, I just don't want to. I, I, if I can get the Seattle Mariners at like plus 130, plus 135, I'll jump on it. But uh, I feel like plus two, 120, there's not enough there for me to bet it. Especially because yesterday's game was really close and had to go to extra innings. So uh, 
I'd rather be able to get a better line if I'm going after the Seattle team. Kikuchi uh, hasn't been all there. He says he's 0-0, uh, 4.74 ERA. So he's been decent, but not crazy good this year. Perez has been the same. So if anything, maybe look towards the over in this game. But other than that, I'm not really going to be too interested in going after it. All right. Our next game here is going to be the New York Yankees taking on the Cleveland Indians. Minus 134 for the Yanks, plus 124 for the Indians. Over under of eight and a half runs for this game. Jordan Montgomery versus Logan Allen. Your thoughts on this one? I actually went Cleveland on this one. Um, yeah, Yankees won yesterday with um, with Jermaine on the mound. Uh, but I feel like this is a good turnaround spot for the Indians. Yankees are still struggling. They still don't have hitting. Um, so I'm not going to say that, oh, they won one game and they're automatically back in the pit. No. Uh, I'm going right back to Cleveland today at a plus 124. I have more faith in Allen than I do Montgomery, even though Allen hasn't really gotten um, as much to him this year. Um, one and two, 4.5 ERA. Um, but I, I do think that the Cleveland Indians can pick up a win today against the Yankees. Yeah, and, and for me, uh, this is a pass, a, a slight lean towards the Yankees here. I have this game lined at minus 138, so four cents of value looking at this on the Yankees. Uh, Montgomery has been okay, not great this year. 4.24 ERA, 1-1 one one record, .88 whip, uh, two earned run, or eight earned runs on 11 hits in 17 innings. He's been okay. Uh, Logan Allen, he's been not great. Uh, one and two record, 5.25 ERA, 1.25 whip. Uh, he's given up seven earned runs and 10, 10 hits in 12 innings. Uh, this is going to just be a pass for me. I just don't see any value on this game uh, to try to bet it either way. Uh, so we're going to head on to our next game here where we have the Kansas City Royals. And the Detroit Tigers, minus 111 for the Royals, plus 101 for the Tigers. Casey Mize takes on Mike Miner in this one. And for me, this is just a slight lean towards the Royals here. I just, um, uh, looking at this, I just don't see any value here. I have this game lined Royals, minus 112. So no value on either side, really. Only one cent of value on the Royals for me here. Uh, if you're looking at Detroit... It's a first five or it's a nothing for me. Uh, it's just nothing I'm interested in betting here. Uh, yeah, minus 106, minus 114. No thank you there. Um, it's a pass for me in this game. I don't have much action on this card right now. Uh, and this is not a game I'm looking to get to. Well, I'll have action in this game. I like Kansas City today. Um, Mike Miner has had a little bit of a struggle start to the year. 1-1 one one with 5.17 ERA. But uh, this Kansas City offense is nothing to be laughing at. They're actually quite strong this year. And uh, it, it shows by them, I mean, it's still early in the season. They're currently sitting in first place in that uh, central division. Um, going up against a team, yeah, I, I am pretty high on uh, on, on Mize, on Casey Mize, though. Um, but that, that being said, I still do have the Kansas City Royals winning this game. Uh, I feel like the offense on the Royals is going to be too much for the Detroit Tigers to handle. All right, our next game is going to be, I think, one of our best matchups of the day if we didn't have uh, our last game of the night here. But uh, we have Tampa Bay taking on Toronto. We're getting Steven Matz taking on Tyler Glass now, 148, minus 148 for the Rays, plus 137 for the Jays. Where are you looking? Uh, I actually have two plays on this one now. I added one to my card. Um, I do like the Toronto Blue Jays, plus 137 in this matchup. Steven Matz has looked really, really good this year. Granted, Tyler Glass now has two. Um, I just feel like the offense on Toronto will be able to take advantage of Glass now more than Rays taking over Blue Jays. Um, but I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'm going to go under on this one as well. Um, uh, under seven, I feel like that's just a good spot for it. Uh, even though it is a minus 110, I feel like this is going to be a good pitcher's duel to the end. Um, probably a 2-1 game where the Blue Jays win or something in that nature. Um, I do like the Toronto Blue Jays and the under in this matchup. All right. And for me, I'm actually adding a, a play to my card here. Uh, we're going first five here. We're looking at the first five lines. And we are going to be taking the under three and a half. Uh, I usually don't bet too many totals here, but I'm, I'm starting to get... 
Now that we have more numbers, I'm going to start looking at totals a little bit more. And I, this one I really liked. Uh, Tyler Glass now has looked phenomenal this year. 2-0, a .73 ERA, 36 strikeouts, a .65 whip. He's given up only two earned runs in 34 and two-thirds innings pitched. And on the other side, Steven Matzis looks phenomenal as well. He's 3-0 with a 1.47 ERA, .82 whip. He's only given up three earned runs in 18 and a third innings pitched. He's struck out 18 batters. These are two pitchers that are pitching really well right now. And I really like that first five under three and a half. I feel like that's, a, a, I mean, it's not much room for error. But I feel like this can hit. These two pitchers are pitching really well right now. And also not to mention the Blue Jays have gone under in their last four games. So I like the under three and a half for the first five innings in this game. All right. Our next game is the Atlanta Braves hosting the Arizona Diamondbacks. Minus 167 for the Braves, plus 154 for the D-backs. We're getting Luke Weaver versus Hector Enoa for this game. And one thing that I was looking at was, why are the Braves still favored by this much? I, I don't understand. They haven't been playing well this year. They're 8-10. and 10. Hector Enoa is 0-1 with 3.94 ERA, 1.00 whip. He's given up 7 earned runs in only 16 innings. Uh, 20 strikeouts, which is nice. He's also walked three batters. He's given up four home runs. Uh, Hector Enoa has not looked good so far this season. And I'm going to keep riding this streak of the Diamondbacks. I had them all three games versus the uh, Cincinnati Reds. They're on a four-game win streak. They've looked really good. I'm going to continue to ride this streak, especially if they keep giving me plus 150 to do so. I really like that. And I'm also going to go with one another play in this game. I'm going over eight and a half runs for this. Uh, these two teams uh, have great offenses. Diamondbacks uh, are fourth in the league with 5.26 runs scored per game. They've gone over in their last three games. And I don't trust Hector and Noah to keep this uh, the scoring down for this game. We're going over eight and a half runs between the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks and the Atlanta Braves. And we're going with the Diamondbacks to get the win. Yeah, I'll be boring on this one. I'm passing on this one. Um... I, I Arizona has been on a little bit of a hot streak, but the Braves still have a very very dynamic offense. Um, I'm not. I, I have a feeling I would end up of leaning the Atlanta Braves route. Um, I don't. I didn't bet them. Um, obviously, I'm not going to lay a minus one sixty seven. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like uh, the streak will really last that much longer for the Diamondbacks. Um, Braves have a really good offense. Really good. I don't know. Um, yeah, this one's just a pass for me. All right, our next game here is the LA Angels taking on the Houston Astros. Minus 139 for the Astros, plus 129 for the Angels. Zach Greinke versus Andrew Heaney. Good looks for this one. Uh, this one I passed on as well. Um, Zach Greinke has looked decent. You see your 2-1, 2.81 ERA. Uh, Heaney has not really looked that well. Uh, but Houston has been struggling, and... The Angels haven't been too consistent either. Uh, just not a spot that I want to get to. Are those that's first five? Yeah, okay. those are first five. Um, uh, this one was just a pass for me. Yeah, uh, looking here for me, um, I was trying to find a, some type of play for this game. Uh, I was looking at Astros first five minus a half, but it's only a plus a hundred. Uh, I'm going to end up passing on this game. I was looking at betting this last night when they were minus 127, and wow, that ship has sailed. They're now minus 140, basically. Uh, and this is just not a spot I want to get to now. Uh, I'm going to be passing on this game, but I was looking towards the first five, minus a half, plus 100 for the Astros, but no action for me here. Our next game here is the Minnesota Twins taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Minus 159 for the Twins, plus 147 for the Pirates. JT, Brew, JT Brubaker takes on J.A. Happ in this matchup. And looking at this game, uh, I didn't really uh, get, I, I haven't gotten to this game. And it's just, I don't want to. Uh, this Twins team at minus 160, or one, yeah, minus 160 basically, have lost their last four games, nine of their last ten. I get it. They're playing the Pirates, and Pirates are not supposed to be a great team. Pirates are not bad. They have the 10th best bullpen in the league. Uh, I mean, their they're, they're other numbers are not great, but they've won six over the last four games. 
are uh, six of their last 10 games and they've got a pretty decent bullpen it's a pass for me here slightly leaning towards the twins but i can't i can't back this twins team right now uh so no action here yeah i i agree i'm not i'm not betting this one if anything a slight lean towards the pittsburgh pirates but not enough for me to pull the trigger uh, if they were like a plus 155, plus 160, I would have pulled the trigger easily and went, I'm going Pittsburgh. Um, if it gets up to that, I'll definitely bet it. Um, but this one's probably going to be a pass for me as well. Uh, also looking um, right now, the Texas Rangers White Sox game is not on this uh, card. Um, TBD right now for Chicago. Uh, so if uh, if that game has anything appealing to it, uh, check out our Twitter. We'll have something posted about that. If we're not betting it, you're not going to see it, so don't worry about it. It's most likely Dylan sees for that game, though. But uh, heading to our next game here, we are looking at the Cincinnati Reds taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Minus 105 both ways. We're getting Sonny Gray taking on Kwong Hung Kim for this game. Uh, and looking at or what's your thoughts on this one? This is the pass for me. Um, I, I'm not going to be choosing between these two struggling teams. Cincinnati's lost four straight. St. Louis has lost two straight. Um, it's just not a spot that I want to look at and be like, ooh, I feel confident in blank. Um, uh, Sony Gray is the strong pitcher. Kim is decent. Um, well, no, not this year. He's got a 90 RA. Um, it, if anything, maybe lean a little bit towards the over, but... Um, this one's just going to be a no play for me. I'm not interested in going after this two, uh, these two struggling teams. Yeah, for me, it's a slight lean towards the over in this game. Uh, these had yeah, two struggling pitchers right now. Sonny Gray, uh, 0-0, 4.15 ERA, 1.85 whip. He needs to get that whip down. And yeah, Hyung Wong Kim, uh, Kwong Young Kim, uh, just hasn't looked good either uh, so far this year. Uh, Lean towards the over. No, nothing on the sides here. I have this label as a pick em, and that's exactly where it is. So no action for me there. So it's a pass for me on that side. Uh, we head to the next game here, which is the Philadelphia Phillies and the Colorado Rockies. Minus 115 for the Rockies, plus 105. For the Phillies, we're getting Herman Marquez versus Vince Velasquez in this matchup. And I look, when I saw this line uh, last night, I thought something's fishy about it. And then I looked a little bit deeper into it. I mean, I kind of understand it here. Vince Velasquez hasn't started yet this year. He's just been a primarily a bullpen guy. And uh, Herman Marquez is the ace of this Colorado Rockies staff. Uh, it's a slight lean towards the Phillies at this plus 105 price tag for me. But I'm not getting any action on this game. I don't trust this Phillies bullpen to do anything for me. I don't trust this Phillies team to get a win for me here. So this is a no play here for me with the Phillies and the Rockies. What about you? Uh, I will be taking the Philadelphia Phillies today. Uh, plus money to fade the worst team in the league is always a, a nice thing. Um, and keep in mind, this could be in course, so it's going to be a high-scoring game, um, which takes the pitchers almost out of it. Um, so I, I just feel like this one's going to be a game where the Phillies can go and put up a bunch of runs and pull, out, pull through another win for a bullpen guy with Velasquez. Uh, yes, Marquez is like the ace per se on the staff, but is he really an ace? I don't think so. Um, I'm taking Philadelphia this one plus 105. I think the offense will uh, persuade them to win or mm. help them win. Yep. All right, our next game here is going to be the Miami Marlins and the San Francisco Giants. Minus 116 for the Giants, plus one si minus 126 for the Giants, plus 116 for the Marlins. Sandy Alcantara takes on Alex Wood. Your thoughts on the second to last game of the night? Uh, I'm grabbing the Marlins in this one, uh, plus 116. Uh, I grabbed them yesterday. Uh, I'm I, I'm probably going to back the Marlins most days that Sandy Alcantara is pitching. Um, I think he's an open cup. I think he's a really strong pitcher. He has not really performed that well this year. He's 0-1 with a 3.28 ERA. Um, going up against Alex Wood, who's made one start through five innings, three hits, no runs. Um, but I, I still think this is a good game for, uh, Sandy Alcantara to really start his, uh, his year. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be grabbing the Miami Marlins in this one, uh, plus 116. Um, maybe a lean towards the under in this one as well, because both teams don't really hit. So, uh, 
but I do like the Miami Marlins in this one. Yeah, for me, it's I'm gonna make an I'm actually gonna have an uh, action on this game, but I'm looking at the first five for this uh, game. Uh, Plain and simply because I don't want it to get to the bullpens and uh, the Giants have an advantage there. And I don't. And I look. One thing I look at is teams with bullpen advantages. I'll look to bet on more full games. Uh, with teams with bullpen disadvantages, I'll look to bet on first five. Miami here, they have a slight bullpen disadvantage. There, it's his twelfth in the league compared to the Giants are eighth. So it's a slight disadvantage, but plus 101 to take them first five. That's where I'm going to be looking at for this game. Uh, I like Sandy Alcantara. I think he can get the job done. I think he can go out there and get us five, six innings, and we don't have to worry about the bullpen with that first five wager. So I'm going to be taking Miami first five versus uh, the San Francisco Giants. And we're heading to our last game here, our marquee matchup of the day, the L.A. Dodgers and the San Diego Padres, minus 141. For the Dodgers, plus 130 for the Padres. Over under of seven runs in this game. Getting Clayton Kershaw taking on you, Darvish, in this one. And uh, for this last one, I have a bet on this game. But when I bet it, the line has moved to where I don't want to lay that much juice to give out a video play like that. I bet the under seven at minus 118. It's now minus 123. I still like the under here, but I'm not going to give it out as a video play. I just think the value is gone on it uh, with that much juice. So, uh, but I do like the first five or the the full game under seven for this game. You Darvish and Clayton Kershaw have looked really good so far this season, and uh, I'm just going to be going with the under here, but not a video play because the the value is gone on that. For this one, I grab San Diego. Um... I, I like you, Darvish. Last time these two guys went up against each other, uh, I think it was, what, a week ago? Less than a week ago? Um, you, Darvish, and Clayton Kershaw both went deep. I believe Clayton Kershaw went six shutout innings. Uh, you, Darvish, went seven innings, leveling up one run. Um, and the game ended up 2 nothing. So it was a very, very close pitcher's duel. I expect the same exact thing today. I'm um, got in San Diego Padres. Um, I like the under as well, but I'm not going to be betting it at a minus 123. Alrighty, quick recap over our plays for today. Uh, I'm going with the Oakland Athletics here, minus 126 versus the Baltimore Orioles. We are looking at the uh, Diamondbacks here. Uh, I was going through all the plays. I was like, nope, nope, nope. Diamondbacks plus 154 and the over in that game against the Braves. And, and then I'll be looking at a couple first fives here with the first five under three and a half between the Rays and the Jays. And we're going Miami plus 101 versus the San Francisco Giants. I'm going with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers plus 128. Uh, I got the Indians plus 129. Royals minus 111. Uh, Blue Jays plus 144 and the under seven on that one. Uh, and then I like the Phillies plus 105. Marlins minus, uh, plus 116. And you Darvish and the Padres plus 128. Alrighty. Uh, I just got to add in two plays for me. Did you add anything, Tim? Yep, I added the under for uh, the Miami game, uh, Toronto game. Alright. First five under three and a half. Yeah, but that's going to uh, wrap it up for the uh, video. Uh, We want to thank you guys all for watching. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, we would appreciate it if you guys did. Uh, also, in the link in the description is Picks and Parlay's YouTube channel. Uh, me and Nick are going to be on there for Morning Wood this morning. And me and Nick are going up against each other in um, a total chaos extreme thing where we're going to be giving out uh, sides and totals uh, in today uh, for today's uh, night stream, uh, me versus Nick. So, uh Go ahead, check them out, subscribe to them as well. Me and Nick are going to be doing a bunch more content over there uh, over the next couple of months, years, whatever it is. Uh, Go ahead, check them out as well. Uh, Subscribe to them. Yep, but that's going to just about do it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching as always. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And let's make some money. Let's cash some bets in the MLB tonight. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.